add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, your roll, your roll, pay so, pay so, add it up, add it up. I'm just doing me, everything is on me. Oh, you matter what? Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, your roll, your roll, pay so, pay so, add it up. I'm just doing me, everything is on me. Oh, you matter what? Super Training family, how's it going? In this video, we have Mark Bell talking with John Hack and learning some of John's secrets. But if you don't know, we just had John Hack on episode 615 of The Power Project. Now, some quick things, because I'm a fanboy of John Hack. You gotta realize that 28 years old, John is already at a level of greatness that most powerlifters will never see. But the second thing, is that at 90 kilogram, in the 90 kilogram weight class, he has the record of 1,005.5 kilos. That beats the total record for the 100 kilogram weight class, and also beats the total record for the 110 kilogram weight class. So if John ever decides to move up a weight class, it's his. In a few years, this guy's gonna be in the conversation about who's the goat of powerlifting. So it's pretty wild that we were able to have him here and learn from him. So if you guys want to actually get to different parts of the video, the description box has the timestamps down below. But I'm going to stop talking. I want you guys to enjoy, <laughs> man can't speak, enjoy this video with Mark Bell and John Hack. What's up guys? I'm John Hack. I'm here at Super Train Gym. Uh, Mark just asked me to kind of explain a couple of my favorite variations for the squat bench deadlift. Uh, I feel like a lot of people ask me, like, hey, what's, what's your... What's the best movement to build my bench? Um, honestly, I stick mostly to the main lifts. I'd say about 70% of my volume is done between squat bench and deadlift themselves. Uh, that said, probably on bench, my favorite variations are Larson press and band bench. It just kind of helps me uh, focus on like stability in that sense. And then squat, I focus mostly on SSB or paw squats. And then deadlift, mostly, I don't do too many variations on deadlift, maybe some pause deadlifts, and we'll focus mostly on just training back. So Larson press, similar to a feet up bench. Some people like to do a full like setup, like get their full arch in. Um, other people like to lay flat. I do kind of like somewhere in between. I don't do my full arch, but I get a good amount of tightness. Um, just gonna lay down. Tucked under, feet up. And just do your normal bench. I've seen a few studies where it's it actually has a little bit higher uh, chest activation, which I, I do feel myself. I feel like uh, after I do like sets of eight with Larson press, it'll you get a pretty good chest pump with it. So SSB bar um, basically it just puts the weight in front of you. It's kind of similar to a front squat, in my opinion. Um, I just like it because it, it trains uh, by like erectors really well, which kind of works for both squats and deadlift. And also hits the quads really good because I'm a very quad dominated squatter. Um, I typically do the same thing as Larson Press. It'll be about three to four sets in the six to, six to 12 range. Um, I don't track the weight very well, but I think my best setup eight is around 500 pounds. Uh, usually do it once a week, just on a on a rep squat day. What are some uh, like reasonable numbers you think a young person should be able to hit uh, before they ever even consider kind of like taking things to the next level, if you know what I mean, uh, <laughs> from like a performance enhancing drug standpoint? I don't know if you could put like a a number on it, like a 500 pound squat or something like that. I think it's more so like age, like training age, more important um, than like your age. But I'll you say, started lifting at 10, yeah. So, gotcha. um, and also, this gets kind of tough because I'm not really <laughs> want to like recommend getting Correct. on gear, right? But it's also like just know it's it's, it's fun, I like it, it's right? Bigger numbers, but uh, there are like it also of, might be a lifelong commitment or yeah. something that you're sort of, I like, guess, trapped in for a while. Yeah, like, it's, it's something where, like, you're going to know, you got to know that you're going to have your highs and your lows, right? And, like, if you don't handle lows very well, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> right, right. Um, but, yeah, I'd say, like, if if you've been stalling for a while, you've tried multiple coaches, programs, um, 
you gotcha. have maybe about 10 years under your belt, yeah. training 8, 10 years. Yeah. Um, and you're, I, if you feel like you're training intelligently, right. I think some, like I've had some clients that like, he's like, oh yeah, I'm like going to start back, back on trend next week. And I like look back at the survey I sent him and he's like, 20 years old. Like, whoa, whoa, look, trend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, first of all, I'd, I don't think that's a great drug yeah. for powerlifting. Breaking out the heavy artillery yeah. that way. You did mention you get some uh, body work done here and there, some massages, but you probably don't really have a whole lot of focus on anything recovery-wise except for some food, um, some sleep, some decent healthy practices, or are yeah, you doing like uh, hot and cold showers? Actually, like speaking of one of your recent guests, uh, Andrew Huberman. Huberman. Yeah, like I started following him uh, back in like, January and just like kind of his tips on sleep have done nice. really beneficial nice. past like, year. I really like, you know, when, it, when someone like that, someone like uh, on John's level that's hitting these all-time world records, he's still seeking out new information, and I think that that's a really awesome thing. I think that people think they're going to be able to get to these certain levels, and then they're going to be able to kind of just chill, but you're always going to be aggressively going after it, always aggressively wanting to get better. Is there anything in particular that drives you, like you... Uh, or you just like you just love lifting, always loved it, and now you're in it. Um, kind of a combination of both. Like I have always loved lifting, but also just been very like uber um, competitive at basically everything I do. And then um, like whenever I see like conversations of like comparing like me to like Taylor Atwood or like Ed Cohen, like who's like the goat? <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely think like Ed has me beat still. But it's kind of like, well, shit, like, I'm gonna, I wanna be the, like, undisputed guy. Yeah, right? Yeah, if you, I mean, if you, if you, uh, if you do reach some of those numbers that you just mentioned, and you do it, I think the key is, to, to me, what, I, what I've noticed over the years in uh, running into people that I would consider to be great at something is the, the, they've done it for a period of time. For sure. You know, um, Kobe Bryant, you know, uh, is, wasn't considered great because he scored 80-something points in the game at one time. Uh, same with Michael Jordan. He didn't win one playoff game. He didn't win one championship. I think breaking an all-time world record is breaking an all-time world record, and it does prove at that time you were able to accomplish that. But when you come back time and time again, you start doing it in different weight classes, and you do it for three years, five years, seven years. Now it's like... Okay, we have to have a conversation. This guy's now got to be kind of lumped in with uh, some of the best. What are some of your thoughts on some of the guys that lift kind of uh, more for social media, but don't go on the platform? Like, do you think that's cool, or would you rather see them get like a guy like Larry Wheels? You'd rather see him maybe get back in. I mean, he's very accredited yeah. powerlifter, so let's make that clear. But would you like to see someone like that get back into it, or um, yeah, I think get on the platform? He's definitely like a guy that he, he's already proven himself as being a good platform lifter. Um, so like, and obviously what he's doing is he's probably making just bank what he's doing now. <laughs> yeah, right. He's had the records. Looks that, like he's having fun. Yeah. Um, so I don't think if he if he wants to get back on the platform, I think he should. But if I I don't think he has anything more to prove really. Right. Um, whereas, like, a guy, say, like, Evan Cardone, who, like, he has a big, de very big deadlift, but um, he's never done anything like that on the platform. Mm. So, I like, if one of his videos gets posted, it's kind of like, eh, like, I'd, I'm not interested in it. Like, what kind of weight is he deadlifting? He's closing in on a 900-pound deadlift. Mm. Yeah, what about the guys that are kind of using straps? Yeah, that, that's, like, the other thing. Sort like, of, um, you know, like the sumo guys with straps that pull on like palm plates and like they're holding the bar like this. Mm. Um, it kind of, I'll be like, oh, that's a lot of weight. But at the same time, like in my mind, I'm like, eh, like I wonder what they could do on the platform. Mm. Uh, I think that's kind of different from Larry because he's already proven right, that right. he can do it on the platform. 